Hi, I'm Jeff Kornberg, and on this episode of The Dragon's Tomb, I'm going to be teaching you how to play One Night Ultimate Werewolf. In One Night Ultimate Werewolf, players take on the role of members of a satanic cult who have all gotten together to worship their grand leader, the Ultimate Werewolf. To set up, shuffle the 16 roll cards and deal one face down to each player. Since all rolls must be accounted for, you do need exactly 16 people to play, so please pick a different game if you have any more or less people. Everybody secretly takes a look at their roll card, then places it inside their pocket. Two people will get werewolf cards. One will be the sacrificial werewolf, while the other will be the grand leader werewolf. However, at this point, it has not been determined which player will be which. All the other players will be cult members, with various titles and abilities. Now you're ready to start playing. The object of the game for the sacrificial werewolf is to fulfill their satanic destiny and get eaten by the grand leader. The object of the game for the grand leader werewolf is to figure out who the sacrificial werewolf is, eat them, gain their power, and then become the ultimate werewolf. The object of the game for each cult member is to trick the grand leader into thinking they are the sacrificial werewolf, so they get eaten instead, imparting divine satanic powers onto their soul. The game takes place over two phases, night and day. For the night phase, have all players sit at the table and close their eyes. Some players will be required to speak during the night, and whenever they do, they must disguise their voice to keep their identity completely concealed. Now, keeping your eyes closed, have everybody stand up, walk randomly around the table, and then find a new seat to sit in. This ensures that nobody will know who they're seated next to. Unless your ability allows otherwise, everyone's eyes will remain closed for the entirety of the night phase. Once settled, the insomniac, unable to sleep, can quickly open their eyes once every 10 seconds to get a peek at what's going on. Some of the other cult members have abilities that will activate during the night in this order. First, the two masons both open their eyes, take note of who the other mason is, and then close their eyes again. This knowledge will come into play during the day phase. Next, the hunter stands up, and in a disguised whisper, asks the person on their left if they are a werewolf. If they're not, they must reply, no. The hunter will repeat this, moving left from player to player until they reach someone who is a werewolf. That player must reply yes. Then, the hunter says out loud, a sacrifice has been chosen, then sits back down. That werewolf is now the sacrificial werewolf, and the other werewolf that wasn't spoken to will now know they are the grand leader. After this, the tanner stands up and says out loud, time for tanning. Every player must take their roll card face down and hold it out in the center of the table. The tanner then looks down and opens their eyes, shielding their vision so they can only see people's arms. They look for which arm has the tannist skin tone, touch it, and then that arm must reveal their roll card to the tanner. Then the tanner closes their eyes and sits back down. Next, the robber reaches into the pocket of the person to their right, stealing their roll card. The robber now takes on both rolls, and since the other player is rollless, they are now out of the game and must leave the room. If you're the drunk, salivate for a minute and then spit into your hand. The spit must remain in your hand for the rest of the game, so try to keep it hidden or the other players will figure out your roll. The doppelganger takes a roll card from someone else, photocopies it, and then gives the card back. However, they keep the photocopy and may use it as proof of what they saw. The seer, keeping their eyes closed, may take their smartphone out and take a video of everything that is happening during the night phase. Once the day phase starts, they may watch the video, learning everything. And that's it for the night rolls. Everyone may now stand, mix up the seating order once again while keeping eyes closed, and then prepare for the day phase. Some rolls will have traits that will activate during the day. The masons must do their best to mirror the actions of each other, copying everything they do and say. The minion may only speak using the language of the minions from the movie Despicable Me. The troublemaker may only speak using lyrics from the song Troublemaker by the band Weezer. And finally, the villagers. The villagers have no abilities at all. They do nothing at night, they're not allowed to speak during the day, and they must always sit there, not moving. When the day phase starts, 
the cult members and sacrificial werewolf must try their best to convince the grand leader werewolf to pick them to eat. Everyone wakes up, opens their eyes, and immediately begins yelling and fighting as loud as they can, trying to get their point across. The louder and angrier you are, the more fun the game will be. Once everyone is exhausted from yelling, the Grand Leader Werewolf reveals themselves and must decide who to eat. If they correctly pick the Sacrificial Werewolf, they both combine powers to form the Ultimate Werewolf, winning the game. If they instead pick any other cult member, that player gets divine satanic powers imparted onto their soul and they alone win the game. All in all, this game is a blast to play. Even though most of the werewolf's decisions will end up being random and arbitrary, it is so cool pretending that you have valuable information that's useful for gameplay. It's also totally awesome that the game comes with these radical pogs.